Hello and welcome back to The Sim. So we're back again with the CRJ and this time we're going to get into working with LVARs but in regards to the FCP or the Flight Control Panel. Also sometimes referred to as the MCP, Mode Control Panel. By the magic of editing, we're now airborne. One of the most important things to remember is you have to be on the Alpha or Beta version to be able to use the Elvar Bridge. You also need to have already installed the Elvar Bridge. The Elvar Bridge enables us to access all of the data of the CRJ. How do I get the alpha or beta? Well, you go into your settings, under application settings, expert, make sure your update channel is set. And my guess is it's gonna prompt you that you have to restart, you close, you restart, it will then do the update. Now that we have it, let's go to our panels. The first thing we wanna do is program these events. And we'll just use heading to start. When I select the heading and I click on this, we have events we can assign. And that starts by going to the add-ons, data monitor, and then I undocked it, so it's already been ejected here. Then I'm going to add the LVAR. So it's gonna load in all of the LVARs. This is basically the event monitor. Now the easiest thing to do is get all the things that are changing up here and we're going to close off all the very noisy event variables. So I'll clear them out. It looks like we're good for now. Up here, we've got the autopilot on, we're in heading mode, and uh, we're in altitude hold mode. Uh, half bank is enabled as well, um, though we can go ahead and we can turn uh, that off. When we want to rotate the heading, what you're going to see is multiple events are actually triggered. We need to tell it FCP heading change to one. Now this is actually moving the data by one. So for that, we simply wanted to add an action, change data value, and Easiest way to find it is to type in heading and you'll see there are the heading elements. Now when it comes to the heading itself, you've got heading change. This is in reference to when we're spinning the knob and you've also got the heading cell or the selector. So for heading change, all we had to do for it was select it. We went with operation to set the value to one. Then what we're also going to do is we're going to take the selector and we're going to increment it by 10. And that's what you were seeing uh, with all of those little increments. But you want limits because it treats it like a 360 degree revolving encoder and it moves it by 10 each time. So we, get, we set our max and min values to 0 and 360 with rollover, so it'll start all over again. And this seems to work perfect for everything. On the counterclockwise turn, we use the same value, but a change of minus 1, and then a heading cell of 10. Now the reason why you change it with a set and not with an increment is you're not actually incrementing the value. You're triggering an event within the custom autopilot which only lasts for a, a brief moment. You set that value to one, but then that value is going to set back almost instantly. So this, this heading change and then that heading selector, those values are working together. So this has worked out perfect. For the display value, we use the heading info. All of these events, so speed, same thing, speed, change. FCP speed select, same values to control it, and then we found our FCP speed window. VS, identical. So it was real easy to just copy and paste all events from the first one I did, which was altitude. Just copy it, so come here copy, 
all events, right? Then we're going to go set this to VS, click on it, and we're going to paste. And we're going to say, yes, replace all. So now what we got to do is we click on this and we simply change from alt change. So now we want VS change. So uh, VS change, except for the VS change, we actually use the FCP wheel change. So this is the only one that's a little bit different. Uh, for finding the exact thing, but it is the wheel that you're moving. So we're going to go down here and now this is the uh, wheel. And in this one, it, it's the wheel itself. Same thing though, increment, the rollover, we're good. So now we come down here, we click on this guy, we change that to wheel change and then we go to the wheel and again same thing now we're decrementing by 10 limit on 0 to 360 with rollover so now that we've done that we've changed those and then for the display same thing would have clicked on it picked up that value and just scrolled on down until we found the uh, wheel info. Click OK. And so then you can just take everything, you know, speed. I want the speed info heading. I want the heading info. Now course, they don't have a course info. However, they're, they're sourcing the same standard nav OBS one. And then on the right hand side for course two, they're using OBS two, but you have to control it through the same method. Course one change, course one select, increment and the set change. You don't actually have to do the selector. The reason why we would do the selector is so that it actually moves in the UI and you hear the clicks. If we didn't move the selector, the value would still change and it would still trigger the event within the sim for control of the autopilot. You just wouldn't hear the clicks. So it's up to you. You could skip that if you don't care about the clicks. For the buttons, this is where it's a little bit different than what we went through with the light switches. With a lot of the switches and lights, you were able to get away with just setting the value. So here we've got the light, the LED. What I did with it was I went and I found the LEDs that show up here. And I use those as my check for lighting these LEDs. So I just took LED one. If that equals zero, switch multi-panel to short mode off. So that'll turn the button LED off. And then same thing, if the LED is equal to one, turn on the light. So that'll turn the button on. Now what was neat is all we have to do is trigger the AP engage LVAR uh, and it will click. So that one was easy. However, most of the rest of these, there is a little bit of an extra step. So we go ahead and we do the same thing for the LED. We find the heading LED zero config to off. And then we find the one permanent on. So again, that's add event, change button light, and then you were sourcing the condition, sourcing the data. And then we were picking an LED, picking the zero, and then adding the condition. And then we would go and we would change button light mode. And so short mode on, that's just turn it on and leave it on solid. Off is everything off, short mode off, long mode. Long mode is for long presses or having two states. When the button is pressed a short time on the heading mode, I send the button animation to one. You give it a, a, a delay, a pause, uh, 100, 200, 300 milliseconds. You pick, uh, they all seem to be enough time. Then right away after that, you are setting 
the button animation back to zero. And for those who don't know how to do this, this is add action, change data value, right? And then we were looking for heading button animation set to one, right? And then we clicked OK. Then for the pause, we added an action, pause, and then you go ahead and, you know, put in 200, 300, whatever. Then we did the same thing, add action, change data value, and then we picked that data value and set it back to zero. Otherwise, the button will stay clicked in and it'll cause you problems. So now that we've done those, that gives us the click. And again, this is actually optional. You don't have to do the button animation, but if you don't, you won't hear the click. Um, because again, it's a push button, it's not a switch. So for the ones that are more like switches, it seems like setting the data is all you have to do and the button will move. But for ones that are push buttons and where other data can kick it off, you went from heading mode to nav mode, it's not going to actually press the physical button. The button's not going to click off for heading mode. What you have to do though, is you still have to set the Elvar. And this is the same thing as what we did with, with the knobs. Setting this Elvar to one will trigger the event and it will actually do a toggle. So right now we're in heading mode and you'll see if I press it, it will toggle heading mode, go back into wing leveler or roll mode, press it again. It goes back into heading mode that handles all of it for the long press. What I did there was I use this just to do the same functionality, but for the sync button. So if you want to sync your heading, but not enable heading mode, well, you can click on the button in here. And we wanted to create that same thing. Just like for the regular button, there's a sync button animation and a heading sync mode Elvar. We do the same thing, press it, release it, kick off the, uh, the actual Elvar so it takes a vent. And so for a long press on the heading mode, all this is gonna do is sync your heading bug Nav button, same process, you sign the lights, and then the nav button, same thing. All I had to do was copy heading, paste it to nav, and then one by one, just change out the data value because all of the setting values match. Going from heading to nav button animation and going from heading Elvar to just nav Elvar. For the long press, because we run out of buttons and because it happens to be right over top of the half bank, I chose to invoke half bank uh, to do the same function. So if you hold it down, so if we hold down the nav button, you see we enable half bank. I hold it down again and it disables half bank mode. IAS or speed mode, same thing. The uh, short press is going to press the speed button. We've got the push button to toggle between mock and IAS or so IAS or mock mode. So we put that on the long press, hold this down and then it will push the button. Altitude short mode is the equivalent of pressing the altitude button. And then in the encoder, there's an altitude cancel button. So we fire off the altitude cancel button uh, using the long press. VS mode. We've got the same thing, turn on the light, turn off the light, and then the same button animation with the hold and then the triggering of the actual event. Approach mode is again, same thing. Lights, button on off for the push. So we hear the click and we see it. And then you've got your approach Elvar to actually enable approach mode. I decided to park the back course button on the reverse button. We are obviously short some buttons. I decided to use the auto throttle since there's no auto throttle in the CRJ. Anyway, I use this to map to the autopilot disconnect button. So if we turn that off, that's the bar. We turn it on, brings it back on. And then we've got our autopilot button to engage the autopilot. 
The flaps up switch, I decided to put the event for the flight director button. And then flaps down, I added VNAV. Now, some of you may be saying, wait a second, VNAV? This doesn't have VNAV. It does. Not sure if it works, but it does. And you're like, but wait, how do you have that VNAV button? If you haven't noticed or read or whatever, uh, in your options page, um, there is a coupled VNAV available. So if we turn that off, that's the normal state, well, it disappears. If we turn VNAV on, well, when we come back here, you see that the VNAV switch shows up. So I went ahead and I mapped VNAV to, uh, to the down arrow. On the wheel, I have mapped uh, the wheel to the wheel as well. That's the whole shebang to mapping those events and how we went about it. This is going to be applicable to a lot of the other areas on the plane. You made it this far. You don't really care uh, about programming this all yourself. We're going to publish it right now. All right. So built with the uh, Elvar bridge, I'm going to do the complete device. And yes, because my text is so high, uh, it pushes it off. But otherwise, you guys wouldn't be able to read most of this. I'm doing it only selected aircrafts it is for the crjs uh hopefully this because of 55700 will cover all of them um and it is now submitted so if you want this just click on a button right create your profile for your crj click on a button come over here to online snippets right so it's not a profile come over here to online snippets and you're going to go complete device, right? And you are looking for, well, you could do it by me, the author, uh, but you're looking for this one, the Microsoft Flight Sim ASCRJ FCP SciTech panel. Uh, and you can see the comment here. Click OK. And do you want to replace everything? Yes, I do. And boom, done. Now you've got all those events and you don't have to use these cool things to learn to fish as always thanks for taking the time to watch this uh hit the like button subscribe if you haven't be nice uh but either way um if there's any questions or comments use the spad.next discord all right take care